Good morning, everyone. And uh, my name is Rahul. And uh, today I'm joined with my by my colleague Akshay. We both are architects working at uh, Zebia and uh, often our roles involve uh, working with our customers to build uh, their technology landscape. So to look at their ecosystem and what would be the uh, choice of technologies that they would need to pick up and uh, take it forward for their uh, uh, development needs. And today we are going to talk around traffic, specifically the observability features of traffic. And we will see that uh, how do we uh, get those features working in Kubernetes along with traffic. Okay, so let's move ahead. So, so when we talk about observability, and uh, there are kind of three aspects to it. So, and uh, the way we look at it, so all three are kind of three dimensions and they are complementary to one another. When we talk around matrices, so of matrices uh, with respect to observability, uh, provide uh, data points with respect to an application. It would tell you the, how an application is performing, whether it is kind of, uh, uh, running into memory issues or how much uh, kind of uh, transactions it is processing kind of things. But again, they are very much, the data is pretty much centric to an application. On the other dimension, we have log monitoring and log monitoring has been pretty much used by op, op services to do kind of uh, triage uh, and uh, root cause analysis. And the log monitoring is kind of a transaction specific to a particular application. So we took out a kind of a, how did an application performed a kind of a particular transaction. So uh, we would kind of go into the log monitoring. And now with the kind of a distributed architectures in place, usually a particular transaction is processed by uh, multiple services. And this is where log uh, request tracing or uh, comes into picture. So the request tracing allows us uh, to uh, reduce our kind of um, mean time to acknowledge or mean time to respond. So basically looking at a particular request trace uh, and we can kind of pinpoint where which application kind of uh, uh, did a kind of a fault or where did the, where is the kind of, where should we start looking into? So basically where should be our starting point? Well, and, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is it possible to full screen that that beautiful slide, your slides, please? Mm, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure. So, right. so sorry, I missed that. So can't you see it? Uh, yeah. We can see, but it, if you oh, put it in full, full screen. So if I do a full screen, so I would need to shuffle through because I have just one monitor and uh, I would need to oh, shuffle oh, through kind it. of different things. So no that worries. would why. Yeah, so that would why. Oh, yeah, thanks. So these are the features from uh, observability perspective. And as we go along in today's presentation, we would see uh, what does traffic offer for each of them. And uh, we would work along with traffic, we, we would deploy it and see all of these things uh, in working. So, but before we go ahead, what we need is an enterprise application. So everything is good. So traffic can provide all of this, but you would need something to test it on because uh, at the end of the day, these are applications that which enterprises are running. So we would need an enterprise application. And for today's kind of a demo purposes, we have picked our favorite Spring Pet Clinic. The Spring Pet Clinic kind of is a pretty enterprise application. Why? Because it is based upon Java, consists of pretty much uh, three microservices runs on MySQL database, has a kind of an angular front end, and all of this is glued together with Spring Boot. So people uh, uh, who have kind of a Java background would know this application because Spring provides this as a tutorial application that uh, which uh, uh, on which we could practice and see the features that it offers. For the, for the other folks, I just provided the what is the what does the what does the application do? Basically, the application is kind of uh, for uh, uh, for a veterinary kind of a clinic where the staff needs to do uh, various operations. They would need to uh, book uh, different customers arriving. They would need to book uh, the veterans available and uh, record the pets, kind of things. 
so and on the kind of a, the other hand side so i have a kind of a image of the home page of the application and we have we have kind of made available source at the below github link so this is our application which we are going to deploy onto our cluster and then see uh, and then uh, use the uh, observability features from traffic okay to give you a kind of an application uh, landscape what does it look like so in our cluster so we have run we have running a cluster on digital ocean and uh, on from an architectural perspective so all our application is the uh, the complete application is deployed into a specific namespace which is spring pet cleaning namespace along with their own databases and uh, traffic is deployed onto a different namespace from where it is delegating kind of uh, all the kind of traffic to it while the load balancer uh, 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 service and then we have the other toolings so prometheus elk jagger jagger so they are all deployed onto a kind of a different namespace and we have deliberately chosen them across different namespaces because that would uh, usually that would be the case so applications uh, usually we would have a big cluster that would be kind of distributed across different uh, teams which would be deploying services to it similarly uh, the uh, other applications like prometheus elk and yagar they would be deployed onto a different uh, namespace where they would be talking to traffic just to give a kind of a holistic view so we have kind of a ui service which is rendering the ui we would have a web service again a yava web service a customer service a visit service again they all are talking to uh, mysql as a backend and uh, the traffic as a ingress uh, layer all of this so i can uh, uh, i hope my kind of uh, my it, my font is kind of visible um, i think i think it should be visible let's see so if i say can we share the github link yet i think it's in the slide somewhere but i don't have it on me yes uh, yes so uh, this is our kind of a github link thank you Uh, I'll just put it on the on our chat. So Perfect. I'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll put it post this. So yes. So if I if we look at our cluster, so I've. let's just pull off uh, so these are the kind of different services which we have deployed to our cluster so api gateway uh, customer vets and visits so this these are all running in kind of our uh, pet clinic namespace and uh, oh, and we have traffic working in the default namespace so for this purpose so let's say okay so there you go so traffic is here working in the default namespace as a load balancer so uh, picking up things from here so the first thing is to get this service kind of a, to get the tra uh, all uh, traffic uh, uh, request traffic goes to the service so for that matter we have uh, a particular configuration in place so if you look at this configuration so this is what a kind of a usual our ingress configuration looks like so you would have an ingress route and uh, which would define uh, like uh, based upon from where host is coming from on which host. so we don't have a kind of a dom uh, domain name uh, we are just running on the ip so that's why we have said traff uh, direct all uh, traffic without a kind of with any host to the uh, ui kind of a pod and uh, and then when we are having a kind of a prefix request then we are routing them uh, to a kind of a vet service to a kind of pet clinic uh, to a customer service and uh, to the visit service and we have built this as a kind of we have uh, created traffic services and traffic services are kind of delegating it to the uh, to the kubernetes service okay so that sums up our kind of a setup and if we try to look it up here so we should have our application working so our application is working 
and uh, we can see that the application kind of okay it's taking a little bit time yeah so i'm just running a test suit onto it so that's why so it is taking a little time so it's a little slow but again it is kind of working fine so coming back to our slides so that's what all our setup that's all in place so let's go ahead so the first thing that we would have a, a stab at is, is monitoring. So let's configure monitoring. So how do we configure monitoring? So for the first thing is we need to enable monitoring in traffic. And uh, once we enable a monitoring in traffic, what we are going to talk to is we are going to talk to Prometheus, but that would be done using a service monitor. And in order to use a service monitor, I would need to deploy a dashboard service. And once that is done, I could configure alerts. I could configure a dashboard, Grafana dashboard onto it. Let's look at it at full uh, one by one. Let's see how we can enable uh, um, the metric endpoints. So if I look at my kind of uh, Helm chart, so uh, I have just provide, uh, provided additional uh, kind of command line attributes to enable uh, uh, the the log uh, the matrices and prometheus based matrices so i in order to enable them we just need to say matrices uh, dot prometheus is equals to true that should enable it and the second line that i have i have deliberately written it and commented it why because it should be true by default so and we should not turn it off so it says matrices dot prometheus add service labels the point of having add service labels is let traffic uh, put service labels uh, with all the request uh, matrices that it is generating because that would help us in putting charts in, in correlating matrices in Grafana with the services to which the traffic is delegating the uh, traffic, uh, the requests. So if uh, we disable this, so we would not get uh, uh, the matrices annotated with to which service the request have gone and how that they have responded. So it would be just based upon uh, HTTP methods, get, post, put, delete, but that is not very useful. So you, uh, in order to make much use of it, so we should always keep the service labels true. Just do that and uh, deploy it. And we have already deployed it. And uh, once we deploy it, we can validate it kind of in our uh, dashboard. So we have kind of running the dashboard onto node port and uh, once we have done this so you could easily see so the dashboard says the matrix uh, feature is enabled and it is enabled with the prometheus uh, uh, flag so now uh, it is enabled it and we can check it at the matrix endpoint so that is how we can validate so if it is i'm not sure if it is visible yeah so this is how you can, we can validate that it is processing and there are pretty good matrices that are being published. So if we can look at the request durations, uh, we can look at how many services, so to how many requests are going to which services, uh, all of that is available. And this is pretty useful matrix that we would kind of use it in our uh, dashboards. So once this is done, so the next thing is to connect this matrix to Prometheus. And how do we do that? So in order to do that, we would need to build something called as a service monitor. Service monitor is again, uh, Prometheus specific uh, uh, definition. So we would build a service monitor here. The service monitor says that we are going to talk to uh, the traffic uh, uh, and the traffic and uh, port of the traffic service. So which service we are going to talk around here is traffic dashboard service. We, the service monitor takes kind of a definition. It tries to match to a service and uh, the traffic dashboard is the service. And then it tries to pick to which on which uh, namespace that service is deployed. It is deployed onto the default namespace and to which port of that service that you would like to use. So we have a traffic port and again on the traffic port slash metrics endpoint. And in order to keep this working, so I would need to deploy the traffic dashboard as well. So normally a Helm chart would not give you a traffic dashboard. So it would just uh, give you a load balancer, but uh, we would need, we, we have deployed this traffic dashboard as well. So we have said this, so we are running traffic dashboard as node port and uh, we have 9,000 port uh, on uh, for the name of traffic. So uh, by deploying this service monitor and again, so we can have a look at it. So now 
let's see you can see let me uh, I think there was a question so I'll just take that in the meantime uh, sure. these sort of pet clinic is uh, I mean you can continue Rahul so I'll just okay. the pet clinic is running embedded uh, you know it's SQL uh, they all have the there's are four pods there you know four separate services so they're all running their own database uh, in memory uh, it's feasible certainly on cloud to sort of have four separate DB instances backing them um, so this is for the sort of it was just easier to run run them yeah. directly so now. previously we were running them onto MySQL uh, stateful sets as well. So the our code has uh, so the GitHub has that configuration as well to run it on MySQL. So but for the current demo we have kind of shifted it to H2 in memory databases. So I have deployed that service monitor. So and this service monitor is kind of connected to. So this is that service monitor by the name of traffic. Okay, so I will say minus O. So you can see that. So again, so this is kind of the service monitor is connected to traffic. Uh, it's running on the traffic dashboard and uh, connecting to the traffic port uh, and the slash matrices. So once we do this, so we can go back and check our Prometheus instance. So once we have done this, so Prometheus would start uh, would giving you service here. So in targets. So Prometheus is now has captured my traffic as uh, the service monitor definition, and it is trying to scrape the matrices endpoint to generate all the kind of to capture all the kind of matrices. Once done, I think uh, we are kind of good with it. All the data is available in Prometheus. All we are left to do is put some alerts and uh, Grafana dashboards. Uh, we can test it. We can test here. So we can put in kind of few Prometheus queries. So if they are working, so I have kind of charted out few Prometheus queries, which I'll cover next uh, when we set up the Grafana dashboards. But uh, that's all that is required to connect traffic with Prometheus. Let me come back. And uh, now we are all up to uh, configuring alerts and dashboards. So let me give you how do we configure alerts as well. So for configuring alerts, we would have to build a Prometheus rule. So I've just built a Prometheus rule which says that too many requests. And uh, again, if uh, we have traffic entry point connections, so these are kind of uh, matrices that are available in, uh, in, uh, in Prometheus, which says traffic entry point open connections, if too many. So I have kind of average number of open connections is kind of uh, is more than 70 in one minute, then I'm saying this one, there are too many requests. And we can validate this value as well. So just to help out, so we can execute this here. So we would see, so once we are kind of putting into this, so we are saying, so how many kind of uh, open connections we have and to which services, so these are kind of linked to. Okay, and once we put an alert, so alerts are also available here. So in, the, in Prometheus dashboard, so which says too many requests. So currently there are kind of zero active requests. So that's why kind of it is kind of working fine. So, but again, it, it keeps monitoring and raises an alert uh, when it is there. And uh, next we go to uh, putting up a Grafana dashboard. And uh, this is our Grafana dashboard, which is trying to measure kind of different things, but what all we are measuring. So let me come back to our slides, sorry. Okay, so what all things that we are measuring? I've just shown total uh, too many requests kind of a thing, which is taking average of one minute request, but uh, we can measure total requests that are kind of available. We can measure uh, the throughput of each service. That means how many requests are being served by per service <coughs> in a particular interval of time. We can check out the average response time, 95 percentile. Uh, let me go one by one. So let's talk around total request. How do you get the total request? So there is a kind of a, if I, uh, let me open up queries. So again, so uh, in order to get a kind of a throughput, we are looking at traffic services requests. 
So this is the, the kind of uh, ent uh, matrix that we are looking at. Traffic, how many requests is being served by traffic in one minute or in the said interval. And then we can sum it up. So, uh, we, so this is, if you know Prometheus kind of a language, this is where I'm doing a grouping by. If I remove the group by, so this is what the total number of requests that we are getting served. And the moment I put a group by, we are getting a kind of a number of requests, how many served by each particular request and in a one minute interval. So that would define our throughput for the service as well. So we can have a look at our kind of a dashboard here. So, and this is being working. So which so this is measuring how many requests is being served. So I have, I'm running a JMeter test suit. So I'm running this JMeter test suit, which is hitting our application. So this test suit is also part of our kind of a repository. And it is hitting our application, making sure that uh, we get a few hits. So as it is hitting, we are generating this matrix. So this matrix is around total number of requests. And again, as I sh as I've shown, so it is get it is looking into total requests kind of a value. And this is where it becomes interesting. So this is where uh, uh, when I talked around the service levels. So when I have service levels, I can see how many of these requests are being served by each particular request. So this is where it becomes labeled as exported service. So you have kind of traffic going to API gateway, you have traffic going to the customer service or to the visit service. So these are all services which are being hit and the traffic gets generated there. Similarly, we can look at the response times as well. So when we, so traffic generates kind of a, let me, okay. So we have a kind of a duration. So we have total number of durations, sum in one minute, uh, and we have the total number of requests that are available. So we are just dividing it up and grouping it by the exported service to give you an average response time. And again, we are grouping it since we are grouping it by service name. So again, you get average response time for the each service. Let me go back. And uh, similarly, you would have a nine because on the same date, uh, on the same data, uh, since we have buckets, so we could generate a 95 percentile as well. So what is the 95 percentile request uh, that we are looking at? And uh, lastly, what we are looking at errors, error rate. So there are 404 errors, which we can use to capture in traffic. And then we can group the same information to find if the 404 errors are coming from services or any errors are kind of being uh, due to uh, some SM endpoint, which is not configured into traffic. So that, uh, that as well, we can do that. So this is how you can do so traffic request total. So, and when you are looking at a particular status codes, so, so each traffic endpoint uh, is kind of a, uh, and each traffic requests is captured against the status code. And that matrix is also available. How many status codes is being published. So we are grouping it here for based upon the web endpoint. And that is where uh, uh, this information is available as, and we can group this again by exported service. So once we group this by exported service, we would know uh, which service is sending what kind of an error. So this is, so we have kind of running a test suit and this is kind of generating as we go along, but I think you can get all, so we have just captured these matrices, but again, there are all interesting charts that we can build. So that's all I had from the perspective of matrices. I'll, uh, I'll ask the Akshay to take it over to uh, show the other features. Thanks Rahul. Um, can you help me? How do you get your PBT to look like this? Let me. Akshay, yes. so. And I can think... I interrupt just real quick? Um, I, I forgot to mention that everyone who's shown up today is eligible to win a copy of the book. So I'll be performing the raffle later. Exciting. Uh, okay, let me share my okay. screen. Okay, once you share it, so there is a kind of a corners, four corners that you would see. So click present. Uh huh. Here. Yeah, yeah. Just click it, and then yeah, just click it, and then. Friend of the screen. Yes. Oh. yes. Four corners, yeah. click them, and then you should be back. Okay, yeah, all right, cool. Um, thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening, I guess. Uh, it's, I hope, yeah, nice to talk to everybody around the globe. Mine is the people in Australia who are probably asleep. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So we covered uh, monitoring with Prometheus. Um, so uh, let's go to logs, you know, how do you, uh, 
use logs, the access logs specifically, because those are of interest, uh, because uh, traffic captures a lot of information for every request that comes in uh, and how you can kind of aggregate them through your uh, aggregation system of choice. Um, and so for uh, us, what we went with is uh, we went with uh, Elastic and Kibana, which helps you to actually store the data and sort of uh, index it and visualize it, you know, through Kibana. Uh, but the, the difference between logging and, you know, monitoring from each is nice. It's sort of almost a de facto standard. You just apply the right CRDs and everything works. Uh, by contrast, I mean, so the Elastic stack is slightly fragmented. Uh, so I kind of, you know, the, the thing I wanted to say is uh, monitoring and, you know, certainly log aggregation and driving analytics from it is like driving a Formula One car, you know, it's never done. You can keep working on it for a year. Uh, and, you know, also it kind of using Kebana kind of feels like this. It feels like operating a Formula One steering wheel. Uh, so if you're, if you're a Formula One driver, you know, the, the analog of it on, on the elastic stack, then you can really do cool stuff, you know, you're like Lewis Hamilton, but if you're not like me, uh, then it feels mind boggling, uh, boggling at times. Uh, okay. So the first step is uh, to enable access logs, right? Um, this is easy. The, the, the traffic portion of it is super easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, so this is our traffic Helm chart configuration, uh, right? We have the Prometheus uh, metrics part. Uh, you basically just enable access log uh, and then also, you can you can sort of uh, set the format to JSON, um, and this is all in the documentation. Obviously, uh, traffic has excellent documentation about this. But there is another option. You could keep it in the sort of common format, uh, and that's sort of your choice. It's it's the way you set up the rest of your uh, log aggregation pipeline. Traffic supports both. Uh, the other thing that we uh, I kind of did was is just playing around with getting more information. Is uh, you can enable certain headers and user agent. Uh, if you're sort of allowed to use this field uh, for your analytics is usually kind of useful. Uh, so let's, uh, I hope everybody can see my yeah, terminal. Uh, so the components we have, uh, we have Kibana, we have Elastic sort of backing Kibana, uh, and then also we have, we have FileBeat. Uh, FileBeat uh, is basically because you need something that can get the logs from each node and push them into Elastic. Uh, and that's where the ecosystem becomes fragmented. You have Logstash, which comes with Elastic, but FileBeat also comes with Elastic. Uh, and we've used FluentD in production for, for almost a year, well, uh, we use not like that, but there's also FluentBit. Uh, and each of them just has their own completely different, almost completely different format, uh, which is where things get uh, tricky. Um, so if we look at the FileBeat configuration, uh, Part of the reason we I went with FileBeat for this demo uh, is that it actually boasts of first-class traffic support. Um, uh, you basically can enable a module; uh, it'll pick up the information that traffic access log gives out, uh, and then uh, process it and push it to Elastic. Uh, unfortunately, the documentation in FileBeat is not great on how to do it on Kubernetes, so uh, we kind of ended up using the JSON way. Uh, it kind of it. If I show you the traffic logs, minus uh, F. So, okay, so it's spitting out uh, JSON logs for me. Uh, let's take a look at maybe the last five. Okay, and then let's pass it through. Okay, so this is you know uh, one entry in the traffic access log. Um, uh, and so you get quite a bunch of useful information here. Uh, you know, you, it's downstream content size, uh, the duration that the request took. Uh, uh, and then after that, it's sort of up to you in your log aggregation framework of choice to really take all this data and process it the way you'd like to. Uh, and, you know, there are, as, as, we, as, as I just said, there are like five different solutions on the market for that. There's also uh, Loki from Prometheus, uh, which I haven't really used, but you're getting service name, you know, uh, the interesting part, you get retry attempts, but you get service name, you get the router name, and this is where you can kind of track your usage if you aggregate this stuff. Uh, so these logs are obviously pushed to uh, the Kubernetes node. Uh, and then because I have FileBeat running, uh, FileBeat is basically, it was easy to just, uh, you never do this in production. It was easy to just pick up the traffic log. In in an actual production use case, you would just have it pick up 
all the logs uh, on all your pods by default and then filter them out at the Elasticsearch level, create or create separate indexes. Uh, um, so this is putting some extra Kubernetes metadata. It's you know adding the host name and a little bit more information. Um, and then it's just outputting it to Elastic. And as I said, you could customize this. The other interesting point, the reason I ended up with FileBeat uh, is it actually sets up some traffic specific dashboards for you uh, in Kibana. So let's take a look at that. Um, how do I, okay. So let's look at the logs first. So as Rahul mentioned, there's some load on this. So it's actually kind of refreshing. It's also slow because likely have hardware constraints, but you get kind of getting this. And if you look at uh, one of these entries, uh, what FileBeat has nicely done is it's, uh, you know, all of this JSON, it's flattened it out. Uh, it's basically pushed it as it is, uh, um, which may not always happen. You know, if you kind of misconfigured, you might have a full string of this. Uh, but we're getting everything here, uh, and that's nice. It's easy, uh, it's good for us because then you can actually, you know, you can uh, pick up fields and uh, filter by them. You know, I, I could uh, remove all of the ping uh, entries because traffic is doing uh, obviously there's a health check on traffic, for, uh, which is hitting the internal ping service, uh, which may not be useful. So you could just filter it out uh, based on the route again. Okay. Uh, so you have everything coming in and now it's sort of up to you really to uh, create nice visualizations or create good dashboards out of it. Um, by default, FileBeat gives you this sort of uh, standard dashboard. Uh, but as I mentioned, it doesn't seem to work well with Kubernetes. Uh, so the data formats are all different. The field names are all different. So you actually have to go in and do some adjustments. Um, if I get it running, I'll push it to the GitHub link. Uh, so nice to share that. Uh, but as you can see, we have records for the last uh, one hour here. Um, this you're getting sort of pie charts of downstream statuses. So we got some errors. So you see some four not fours, and these are sort of the top paths being hit, right? Uh, and as you can see, because uh, there's a constant health check happening on Kubernetes, so slash ping and slash metrics is actually at the top right now. But while there's some constant load on the system, uh, as you can see, in a, uh, I think the load is stopped right now. Uh, some of the others uh, come up. Um, let's look at last 15 minutes, drill down a little bit. Oh, we actually don't have uh, an active load right now, right? Uh, let's just this. Okay, so um, like I said, this is some of the visualizations you can kind of create out of this. If you're capturing the proper geo information, you can actually get a map of, uh, you know, and this is all coming from the traffic access log. It's just uh, all the things you can build on top of it. You can get the response codes over time. Um, so while there was a load on it, uh, kind of get a distribution of how many 200s there are, how many 304s or 404s there are, or 500s. Our sample application doesn't have a lot of errors in it. So you're kind of restricted by that, I guess. Uh, but, and then you can kind of see, okay, what are the response codes uh, by top URLs, you know, the endpoints that are getting hit the most. Uh, you can also kind of see which I like uh, the uh, byte size. Um, let's explore some of these visualizations. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, again, this is just your basic statistic theory. Uh, uh, the access log has this field called downstream content size, right? Uh, it's here, which is basically the whatever data was returned uh, from this. Uh, this is a downstream service called API Gateway, uh, which is serving up our web content. Um, and you can sort of aggregate, do a sum aggregation off of it, uh, and then bucket it by time. Um, so this is all standard Kibana stuff uh, that gives it to you uh, out of the box. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, I also uh, like these pie charts, which is what these are. And, you know, we can take a look at these. Uh, so this is basically just doing a count aggregation and then you have uh, request paths. Request paths is this field here, um, which is, you know, it's a root here, but it would be, you know, slash API, yeah. so slash API, slash customer, whatever. This is your API path. Um, you could, you know, you could play this different ways. You could do it by request path. You could also do it by router name, you know, and uh, it's sort of up to you to 
how you want to configure it or service name if you just want to kind of figure out which backing services are called rather than at an sort of endpoint level. Uh, it also gives you entry points. Um, we only have two entry points for web and uh, web secure, but potentially if you create separate entry points for different kinds of you know workloads, um, and then you could categorize it by that as well and see what kind of workloads get hit the most. Uh, so this is just a count metric. Okay, uh, let's go back. So that's sort of a quick view at, uh, it's, it's really a starting point. You can do a whole lot more with uh, what you get out of the traffic access log. And as you see, uh, on the traffic level is the easiest part. You just basically enable a couple of switches. Uh, so it'll end up looking like this. Um, I hope I'm not, okay. Okay. Uh, then we can talk about Jaeger, uh, but uh, you know, I have, uh, in the interest of injecting a little humor. Uh, Patricia, the problem you are having with the title of the book, we had that as well. I kept changing it. Uh, in fact, I think I changed it up until the last day and I had to ping Rahul and say, I'm changing it yet again. And then I think finally they didn't go with the last title I proposed. Uh, so that's why it's, I mean, it's my fault basically. Okay, um, let's talk about Yaga. So again, for traffic, it's super easy. You basically, uh, set tracing.yager to true. Well, you set tracing to true, tracing.yager is on by default. Uh, well, tracing is- I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I just want to say this out loud and I'm not sure if it, it, if it will change the way you're presenting now, but I, I do want to say it. So someone asked, um, they said, I would love to also see the topic from a code creator perspective. So I assume that means kind of a whole different meetup, but just in case it doesn't, I'd like you to know that feedback came in. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe I'll, I'll close this and then we can talk about what the ideas are not too sure. Uh, let's just close this uh, because Jagger, anyways, we don't have a lot. Um, okay, so distributed tracing is a complex uh, topic uh, because you have Jagger and that's sort of the de facto standard since Uber open sourced it. Uh, but Spring Pet Clinic, you know, this application uh, is all based on the Spring Boot ecosystem. Uh, and by and large, the Java ecosystem is still on the other standard for tracing, which is OpenZipkin. Uh, so combining them both uh, proves to be challenging sometimes. Uh, for traffic, it's no problem. You know, if I set this to Zipkin, it will just start spitting out Zipkin traces. And I just said, uh, but Spring Boot doesn't like it that much. You really have to do a lot of fiddling around. So yet again, traffic makes things simple and all of this, the other sort of infrastructure components actually have more problems. Um, this is in the book, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, I guess we haven't been pitching it strongly enough. All of this is in the book, maybe not in this way, uh, but we sort of start from scratch and because this is super complex, uh, uh, I was fiddling around with this just before this demo and I knocked up a load balancer on digital ocean as well. Uh, so it, once you get the pieces right, everything just works. So Jaeger basically exposes two endpoints, uh, you know, the sampling server URL and uh, local host, agent host port. This is in traffic. You basically have to point it to two ports. Uh, we have Jaeger running here. I can show you that. Um, this is uh, actually the default installation of Jaeger. Uh, so this is done through an operator and then yeah, it's just a all in one kind of thing. Uh, the, the sort of full production installation of Jaeger is kind of really huge. It's probably more complex than Elastic, but then we didn't need it for the demo. So there are just a couple of ports exposed. Uh, in fact, there are a few services exposed uh, on the Jaeger. Right, so we basically just sending everything to the all in one agent. Uh, this is a nice thing. Uh, Open Zipkin typically uses 9411. So actually Jaeger does support Zipkin traces. Uh, and so if I enabled that within pet clinic, it would start sending traces to uh, Jaeger easily as well. Um, but then you have to fiddle around with other traces from traffic the same as the ones that uh, the, the pet clinic sends. Uh, but anyways, uh, for traffic, at least it just works. Uh, you know, we're getting all of the traces that we have here. Uh, it's actually, you know, by entry point, uh, uh, and then the, the internal ones you probably want to filter out, but uh, even the where we access Prometheus, for instance. Okay, so let's see. Okay, yeah, so it's basically giving me my traces. Uh, again, tracing is, you know, it's 
you keep working on the formula one car you know so you keep sort of adding more and more uh, you can go down to the database level and even instrument those calls uh, to get it into your traces um it's a homework exercise for all of you i guess um let's see um yeah so that's really all about jagger uh it doesn't require as much configuration as aggregated logging because it does a little bit less uh, but sort of plugging it all together uh, within your applications is complex. Uh, as we saw for traffic, it's a couple of flags. You flip them on and everything just starts working. Uh, okay, so all of this, you know, this uh, monitoring, you know, with Prometheus uh, uh, and then log aggregation and, you know, we saw distributed tracing. These sort of capabilities of traffic, uh, they're all in the book, right? Uh, which is why uh, we're sort of talking about it. Uh, and as we saw, some of it is, quite kind of complex. There's a lot of deployments, pods, moving pieces, everything going on here. Um, and so the nice thing with, with what we do in the book is we go up from scratch, right? So it's a beginner to intermediate book. If you're already a traffic expert, uh, please still buy it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we start you off from scratch. Uh, you set up traffic by hand on your local system, or you set up a service, uh, and then you just route it through traffic. Um, and then you uh, set up Prometheus, you know, that's in one of the chapters, then you expose microservices, you know, there's a spring pet clinic is sort of a famous microservices case study. So uh, we actually set that up locally uh, and then expose that through traffic. And then in the next chapter, we actually do a Kubernetes deployment and deploy traffic on top of Kubernetes. So it's sort of built up piece by piece, we hope. Uh, and so hopefully if you sort of follow along with how we do it in the book, uh, you get a little bit more of an in-depth look at how to uh, plug the various pieces in. So we cover observability. Uh, we actually cover both Zipkin and Jaeger uh, in the book, interestingly. Um, and we cover Prometheus, how to sort of set it up by hand and then, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, that's about it. You know, there's a link to the A Press site where you can buy a copy, and then the code is already online. Uh, did I miss anything out, Rahul? No, I think uh, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh, well, I was just gonna say um, a couple things. Is one is we can, there's some questions. Uh, just a couple. I think you might have touched on on many of them. And then we can encourage people to ask some more questions in the chat box now. And then again, and I'll try and get this done today, but for sure by the end of the week, uh, four lucky people will win a book. So I'll do that raffle shortly and, and um, email those winners. And then if you don't hear from me by the end of the week, you should definitely go check that book out and, and support their work and buy it. Um, and, and so that's all I had to say. So, um, let me know when you will just go ahead and answer the questions or let me know if you want me to help at all. Okay, I think um, we can answer the questions. Uh, yeah. um, okay, so uh, I think the first question was answered. It was related to SQL. So it said that uh, uh, the whole command out does each SQL instance associated with a different service in the same pod as the service or is it in the SQL, is in SQL SQL deployment. So in, the, in our current uh, demo, we are running it with the, within the uh, application itself, as we said, uh, but uh, our application can be deployed as a separate uh, stateful sets, MySQL stateful sets. So there is kind of a uh, instruction set how to do that. Uh, so it is fairly possible. Okay. And then the next question was, uh, most of what this is showing is a deployment perspective would love to see the topic from a code creator perspective. So uh, I think uh, when you are working with the traffic, you are mostly configuring and deploying things. From a code creator perspective, you are either writing, so when we talk around an application, then you are putting up, uh, how do you do an observability stuff or how do you explicitly uh, uh, ex uh, write those matrices or how do you kind of uh, write those access logs? Uh, that is from an application perspective. But when you are working with kind of traffic, you are mostly joining the dots. So traffic has done a kind of is, uh, is working on all of these dimensions and we just need to configure them properly. So Akshay, would you like to add something? No, I mean, potentially if, 
I mean, you know, check out the traffic documentation. I'm sure a lot of you have. We have done it so many times. Um, it covers a lot of use cases. Now, potentially, if there's something that you need that it doesn't support out of the box, you could write your own plugin, and that's a whole separate meetup. Uh, but it is a pluggable system. But most of it is kind of is already done and dusted. So if you are if you output in JSON format, you are just need to kind of have a transformer as we did in Yager. If uh, most of the matrices are kind of uh, useful matrices are already being published in the Prometheus format, as well as in the in the uh, logging logging we have covered. Yeah, from uh, tracing perspective, traffic uh, even if you look at the traces, so traffic gives you enough information on the traces to which uh, uh, service uh, it has delegated to, what is the status code, um, what are the kind of uh, 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 kind of size, the, the downstream kind of a size that has been shipped. So all of that information, you get that on the span header itself. So most of the usual useful information is already there. So, and uh, there is very less need of kind of uh, tweaking it out. And I'm pretty much sure that if it needs arise, so we, like uh, traffic, we can go back to the traffic community and there would be kind of an easier way to plug that in. Uh, was there more to that question? Maybe, you know, whoever asked it can type in or elaborate yeah. more. Um, I'm just showing up the traffic That's dashboard. Gone. Okay, then we have a next question as well. In the meanwhile, we'll try to answer that. So are these services also available on the Swarm cluster? Um, you mean these services? Yeah, I think it was yes. about the pet clinic. Yeah, I mean, so I can actually, so get all, it's in a separate namespace. It's not in the default namespace, but it's all here. Yeah, so we are basically running, yeah, it's, it's just one pod. And, you know, it's all running on top of, in fact, uh, huh, okay, no, it's not replicated. Yeah, they are, you know, uh, they're in a separate namespace here. Um, okay, and then we have, can we do your book without Kube? Yes, I think uh, so. There is just one, like one of the last sections of the book is focused around Kubernetes and how do you deploy it on Kubernetes and get it working with Kubernetes. But traffic can be deployed outside of Kubernetes as well. So uh, we build, so we have built microservices without Kubernetes as well using the Netflix stack, as we say it. And uh, we have given uh, like enough uh, in the book to run it uh, outside of Kubernetes as well as a standalone along with kind of uh, the Netflix stack as well, console and uh, Eureka, all those components. And we have tried to show that with the Spring Pit Clinic application. So if we have an enterprise application, what would be the tooling that you would have normally picked up and uh, kind of ran it? So, I mean, this demo is sort of, chapter eight and nine, you know, because the book stops at chapter seven. So this is built on everything that is there in the book. Uh, you know, while we were writing it, you know, Spring Pet Clinic, the Kubernetes version wasn't out yet. Uh, so, you know, for this demo, we figured, you know, because it's out now, we figured, okay, let's take a version of that uh, and build upon everything that's in the book so that it sort of whets your appetite to go back. And then you can come back to the demo and see how it all fits together. Uh, uh, the last chapter is is on Kubernetes, but everything else is sort of built up from scratch. Um, the other thing is also, you know, it's come to my attention that uh, traffic is big in the Docker Swarm community. Uh, and, you know, we like Kubernetes. We think traffic works really well on Kubernetes. So it was just, it was a no-brainer to do a demo on top of Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay, so then we have another question which says, uh, uh, do we uh, do you have a gu any guide uh, when we want to migrate from one version to another version of traffic uh, from traffic 2.1 to the current version i mean that's uh, it's right here i mean the traffic documentation but i mean it's a good question uh no i guess now we don't uh, right i think uh, we don't have a guide but i think the community is big enough and uh, we can uh, write it up there and uh, you would get enough support but uh, we don't have a guide for it to migrate it from one version to another version. And specifically, we have written the book on 2.3 version or two dot, yeah. So I think that at that, when we wrote the book, so 2.3 was there working. So we started with 2.2 and then we went on to 2.3. So we have made sure that it works, the, all the code works on 2.3 and 
Uh, yeah, I mean it doesn't. Yeah, sorry. And it doesn't break on 2.4 as well, the current version. So we didn't. Uh, so the traffic 1.x line, uh, you know, didn't have this sort of CRD, you know, uh, the Kubernetes CRDs that traffic has now, the ingress route stuff. Uh, and so we kind of stayed away from it. Our focus was on the latest versions, uh, you know, especially certainly for the book. Uh, so we went with the CRD approach. Uh, I don't like configuring the sort of Kubernetes ingress weights kind of messy. Uh, so we definitely like the CRD approach more. Um, yeah. It's also, you know, we didn't want to, you know, it's not, we could pick up the documentation and put it in a book that wouldn't be valuable. We wanted to address use cases and ways of working which were not in the documentation. And so pick different examples, pick different applications because traffic has a really nice, who am I application, right? But if you just put it in, what's the value add? The value add is in taking traffic and then sort of, you know, taking it for a ride, uh, plugging in different systems and different pieces, which might not always be in the documentation, but traffic has adapters for it. Yep. Okay, then there is one more question. Uh, can we try this with the traffic open source or the enterprise version is required? Uh, I, the, all of this is done with the uh, with the community version, with the open source version. And uh, if you have an enterprise version, I think it 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 adds a lot more value. And uh, but uh, all of this is done with the open source version. Okay, let me look I at... see a big one that just came in about Jaeger, Jagger, whatever we want to call it. Uh, that's a really good question as well. I, I can kind of take this. Uh, so they're basically saying, you know, do you have to add support inside each service? Uh, uh, and that's a good point. Uh, you know, I, it's basically saying, okay, I'm new to instrumentation and Jaeger. Do you have to add it support inside each service, you know, user service, pet service? If it is not in the existing services, then the traffic tracing feature when enabled will only tra trace traffic related calls. That's a, a, a good point. If you, in fact, if you saw my screenshot, it was actually only the, uh, the traffic uh, uh, traces. Uh, and the reason is that it, well, how do you do tracing, you know, in today's world? Typically you use a service mesh, unfortunately, you know, you, because it's a complex problem, you add another complex layer on top to potentially try and solve it. And sometimes you, uh, succeed. It's quite feasible to uh, uh, add the instrumentation easily uh, inside Pet Clinic uh, for Yaga, uh, but it requires you to sort of fiddle around with it because um, you know Pet Clinic uses Open Zipkin by default. Uh, traffic doesn't care. Traffic can do both. Uh, Open Zipkin is not really compatible with Open Tracing, which is what the standard that Yaga was built on top of. Unfortunately, open tracing is deprecated because uh, open tracing has merged uh, and it's now open telemetry. You know, it's merged with the monitoring part of things. And as I understand it, the open telemetry standard is not quite uh, completely stable yet. Uh, the I did give it some thought. The way to go about it is to uh, sort of enable Zipkin support inside Yaga, uh, which it can do. You know, we saw this 9411 port. That's a Zipkin port. Um, let me see where it is. Uh, and then you sort of uh, change, tweak some configuration so that it sends Zipkin traces to Jaeger. Um, and then you change uh, the configuration inside traffic, or oh, actually my screen is not shared, but anyways. Uh, and then you change the configuration inside traffic, uh, which is again, the nice thing with traffic. Uh, instead of sending Jaeger traces, it will send the sort of B3 traces, you know, the open Zipkin style traces to downstream services. And that's what it will send to Jaeger. Uh, I haven't tried it out completely. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, but if I sort of get it working, I'll push it to the, Git, the GitHub link. That's the easiest way to go about it. The tough thing is you go in and figure out what adapter you want, and then you add open tracing inside all of your project code, which you don't want to do it. These, these services, are, they're Spring Boot services, they're using Sleuth, uh, uh, so you don't have to worry about all of that. But if you start ripping it apart, you rip everything apart. Um, Distributed tracing is super useful. I won't deny it. It's one of those things that to me is not quite set in stone yet. You, it requires some work uh, from end user level. Okay, um, so there's one more question. Uh, in case we have file upload service behind traffic, will it cause any performance issue? 
um i haven't tried it travel you may have a perspective on it uh, the traffic team would have a much better perspective on it i'm sure they've load tested it yeah we haven't specifically load tested this use case but from my perspective it should not have any impact so if we talk around kind of a uh, behavior so it's usually the event loop that hands over so that is what the de facto standard of implementations so i don't see that having a kind of an impact here i mean i'd like to show something you know let me just quickly share my screen again uh let's see um sorry i hope everyone can see it so yeah you know let me okay so this is the uh, sort of you know metrics you know cpu cores and memory from from this sort of digital ocean cluster traffic you know if it's all this traffic that that's coming in it's still only using like 31 mi of memory and you know 14 milli cpu uh, and by comparison prometheus is using 102 and when there's load on these services uh, this goes up to like you know at least 100 or 200 milli cpu traffic is barely using any resources uh you know it's comparative to file bit file bit is just doing log aggregation uh, and it's you know and the its uh, utilization is about the same as traffics uh so traffic is incredibly lightweight uh you know my log aggregator is using you know whatever kibana is using 309 you know mbs or whatever traffic is only using 31 so it's incredibly lightweight it does it's not a resource for you you know with file upload you will have to worry about connection timeouts and stuff and traffic gives you support to tweak some of those if if it's a really big file yeah i think so those are standard things that you would need to upload the file and but from a performance perspective so usually we are running event loops at everywhere and i think uh, that takes care of most of the things Um, okay. Well, this this is very good. I don't know if you want to answer. I think there might be one or two more. But um, Chris is saying thanks to Rahul and Akshay, and and I will echo him in in that thanks. Did you want to um, answer the little few questions coming in? There's just one more. I think uh, so. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and Sergio has this question saying, has this performance comparison due to the fact that traffic is written in Go, whereas Spring Pet uses Java? Yeah, absolutely. uh traffic was built from the ground up to be incredibly lightweight certainly on sort of these cloud native platforms or 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 on, on cloud or kubernetes um and spring pet clinic is it's an older application it was originally written for an enterprise use case uh and you know when i when my screen was shared uh, all of these applications that are using more memory you know a lot of this is java based right elastic is java based uh, prometheus also as i remember it is you know at least a few parts of it are in java uh, and the java ecosystem is it was kind of tuned to run big monoliths right uh, instead of a lot lots of small services traditionally that that was the case um they are catching up now you know they have graal vm and everything so it will get much much better but yeah this version of spring pet clinic uses more resources uh, also it's running a in memory database inside don't forget and just uh, for the matter of fact we needed to show an enterprise application that traffic works with an enterprise application at the end of it if uh, if if you need to rewrite your complete suit then it doesn't make sense so but traffic is kind of way so once you deploy your enterprise application onto the uh, your cluster it works fine so that's what the whole aim is i i think rahul you put this in the book right it it's super feature rich and easy to operate uh, it's a lot easier to configure it's a lot easier to operate how dare you uh, it's super rich so i think you can pay a little bit of cost for all of the feature set uh, and ease of use that it gives you yeah all right should we should we wrap it up then i think i think the timing is beautiful and from my side you both did such amazing work and i see everyone super appreciative in the in the chat box too. So, um again everyone what's going to happen now is uh I will produce the video and I will email it to all of you early next week. I get to have fun today and do the raffle of picking out uh the winners and notify you and um again encourage any of you who don't get the book to please 
invest in these um, two amazing people who have done such great work and we're so grateful for you. So thank you for all for joining us too. Um, anything you wanna say, Raul and Akshay? No, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, like for, for doing this for sure, because uh, I think we have done uh, like we have used traffic. We have kind of uh, kind of seen the benefits of it, and it's worthwhile sharing with the fellow uh, community so that uh, they can also reap the benefits. So thanks for providing this uh, an opportunity. Yeah. Cool. Thank and I think we had a baby, and just so you know, that baby is powered by traffic too. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the patronage. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you for reaching out and setting all of this up. Uh, it's been great to yeah, interact with so many people. Okay, well, everyone have a great night, great day, and a, and a wonderful everything and stay very well and we'll see you online. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye.